Hello and welcome to another tutorial. This may be my second one this year. Today we're going to be breaking down a commercial project this time, an actual animation. This is Sonny's project. It's his first ever 3D animated commercial and he created it within our program. We helped him create it, learn how to you know do the 3D, the modeling, lighting, all of that stuff, as well as the animation. He put this commercial together within our program. I sat down on a lot of calls with him, helping him through it. And he ended up getting a project after posting this using our methods on Line. and it's awesome to see how he can just put in the work he gets his quality of work up there and right after he gets paying work which is great to see so yeah if you want to contact him get in touch with him when it comes to doing 3d animation services for your company or brand the links will be in the description to reach out to him and message him i highly recommend him he's great to work with so if you take a look at this commercial here here you can see we've got the after effects timeline and here we've got all of our cinema 4d scenes so generally the way we structure it you know there's obviously a lot of details that we go through but if i had to give an overview uh firstly you need a list and know what the project is about so you need to know what product it is what are the features that you're selling for the company this is stuff that you chat about with your clients and you take notes on so what we did with Sunday is we listed about 10 different features of our product so that we had a structure for the project in terms of what scenes will actually go in the commercial this is before you actually even make anything and kind of roughly in what order and we looked at you know look development uh, storyboards in terms of the style of the video what kind of um, video feel will we give in terms of the colors and the styling and the pacing and stuff like that as well as you know what scenes will go in what order and what's the best transition from scene to scene in terms of what the advertiser is selling and what they want for their product and all of that stuff and um, when you get an awesome result like this you see why companies pay so much for these videos because this is something that's very unique uh, to 3d which we'll be breaking down for you here so once you've got all of that stuff put together uh, with your music and all of that stuff and treating it like a real project so this is a concept project for a client then this is the result that you end up getting so here you can see uh, we've got our different scenes here scene one then it goes scene two scene three if we just take a look at the actual you know structure of it so here we've got our different animations files but a cool and interesting thing that we did with this scene uh, and this video in general is the way we rendered it for optimization of the rendering um, so if you actually take a look at the render here you can see that the actual render and the backgrounds are separate files if you look at this scene as well here you can see the they're separate files and if i turn off the vfx here you can see the depth of field is also applied in post and the reason why we did this is because we realized upon rendering that a lot of the samples were going towards the background and the background was taking up such a big part of the scene um, that it was better from an optimizational point of view to render that inside of after effects rather than you know octane because octane and cinema 4d was having a lot of fireflies and stuff in the background and because it's just a background element and it's taking up such a part, big part of the scene we might as well do that in post i don't recommend this all the time um, but in this case it was better to do that so here where you could see we're using you know fresh last depth of field <laughs> it's a really bad name for for that for that product but it's the depth of field plugin we were using and we rendered our background separately camera animation all of that stuff is still the same and then we render the product on a separate file as a png and then we apply the background blur underneath so this is something that's very adaptable you know if i change this to 25 you can see that the depth of field size is uh very adaptable if you want like like a big depth bokeh and stuff i can increase this to like 50 big bokeh I want less bokeh i can decrease this and you can see the bokeh disappears um and you can also change the sizing and the shapes and all of that stuff which is pretty cool but uh this is the way we went and did it and then once you apply your you know post curves and highlights and color corrections and stuff like that this is the result that you get here you can see the raw render that you get out of octane which is pretty flat which is good because afterwards you can apply any exposure and contrast corrections if you want to afterwards so this is pretty much it and then here you've got the text the text uh, the fonts i don't actually have installed on my computer so it's just showing this default font but here you can see you know we've got our text uh, and then our two layers from the actual back plates as well as the foreground between these two you know we've got our particles here you can see 
we have uh, particles flying around and that's just using trap code particular to uh, put our particles in the scenes because some of these scenes have particles to add depth inside of the scenes which i thought was a, a good add-on for uh, all of the scenes yeah that's pretty much how all of the scenes were were rendered and put together in terms of composition even here if you look at this scene you'll see that the background is uh, completely separately rendered which is uh, good from a rendering point of view we couldn't get rid of the noise on the edges and that's just based on the way we were rendering it it's very technical so i won't even get into that but in the end we were like yeah it's fine you know this is just made for getting more clients it's not like uh, we're trying to win any awards here uh, and it did its job in the end he ended up getting paying work for it so um, now he's even trying to get more and more clients using it but uh, this is what we ended up getting as a render there were parts like there and here where we were having a bit more noise but from just to you know push it out and get it done we uh, ended up just rendering it as it is and it looked great in the end so you can see obviously there are cuts to the beat and animated to the beat as well in terms of the animation and the speed and all of that stuff we've gone over the background the particles you know we imported the 3d data into after effects so that the particles and stuff move with the camera which is very smart so all of the particles feel like they're part of the scenes and they move with the 3D cameras and stuff like that. And that's what gives everything a very lifelike kind of feel. And uh, here you can see the camera and stuff looks very, very good in terms of the quality of the way it was put together from modeling, lighting, texturing materials, all of that stuff, very high quality stuff. So I'm really proud of Sunny. And um, yeah, that's how the overall project was structured. Now, if we go into actual 3D scenes here, here we can open up our model scene. And here you can see we've got our actual model with all the different components of the body, the lens, all of the stuff inside of here. So if we take a look at some of these pieces, a lot of them seem to be collapsed into editable objects, but maybe some of this is still preserved in terms of the structure. Here you can see we've got the geometry of how all of this was uh, put together, modeled very, very well. So good stuff to, to Sunny for, for putting this together so accurately in uh, terms of the model. And here you can see we've got our flaps, our clip-on here at the back. And uh, here you can see we've got the bottom section over there. The way we've structured the project is to dynamically have the scenes interact with each other. So we have one scene file for the model. We have one scene file for the phone. And as he moves along the project, he can continuously build upon the model to update it in terms of the materials, the model. If something looks off in one of the scenes, he can update it and the rest of the scenes will update. And we do that using XRefs. So let's say he notices that the T is uh, blurred out or this thing is off in terms of the geometry. We can go into our other scene file here. We can make an update. We say that we want a cube to sit right in the middle to fix our horrible problem with our scene file. We go back into our animation here and we know that, okay, we're gonna update this and all of our scenes are gonna update with it. So now here you can see we've got our cube and this is going to apply to every single scene. So if we wanted to take this knob here and make this knob a triangular shape and we don't wanna now have to copy paste into 10, 20, 30 other scenes if, you're, if your commercial's long, there, there can be a lot of scenes piling up. We know that we just go into our main scene file where the model is, you know, we make our updates and stuff, we save it, we go back into here and uh, all, of, all of the rest of our scene files that are closed will automatically update. But the ones that are open, we can just reload here and all of our models will update uh, correctly and uh, that's a very dynamic way of working when it comes to your scene files the same with the phone if we want to change the phone up and make this phone into a different type of phone or whatever um, we can easily just update that and all of the scene files will update with it so that's a good dynamic way of working in terms of the the linking of the scenes you know animation basically we're using curves to soften out camera animation so if we look here you can see there's always like this uh, slowness that kind of appears and then it speeds up and slows down. So here it starts fast and then slows down. And then usually it'll speed up again and then slow down and then speed up, go through the thing and then slow down. And we're just doing that using simple, you know, splines and stuff like that. There's nothing too crazy uh, when it comes to that. We always have curves uh, applied to the product 
and the camera. And so long as the camera, you know, is pointing in the right direction, then all of that stuff ends up looking good in the end. So here you can see we've got our camera that's pointing at the product. If I can hide some of these HDRIs, we've got our focus linked to our focus target so that our focus is always where we need it to be and our focus is not being shifted around depending on where the camera is which is good and then here you know we've just got our camera that's attached to a null and then we're animating the null this seems quite simple in terms of the animation so we'll go into another one here you can see we've got our scene file here with the camera that's uh being exploded with the animation here you can see we've got our, our rotation applied to the group that's rotating and then inside of the sony here we've animated the different parts to kind of you know explode apart but you can always swap out these different individual parts if you update the actual model itself then this will update in this scene as well so it's so dynamic in terms of the animation because Updating the model is not going to break anything in the scene and you're not going to have to reanimate things going forward and I highly recommend if anything is going to be animated with your product, you want to put the geometry inside of a null and then animate that null so that you can always swap out the geometry and not have your keyframe data tied to the geometry itself. It should just be tied to the null so you can adaptively, you know, animate those things. And here you can see the scene files are so simple. Like, look at this. This is all that it is. It's just the product with the camera moving in different directions here. You can see it's nothing too crazy. We've got a bunch of nulls here for, uh, you know, all the 3D data for exporting. If you look at the actual After Effects file, this is what you end up seeing because, you know, the background is rendered in uh, After Effects for the depth of field and stuff. And um, once the motion blur depth of field is applied with the, you know, getting your, your camera position in the right place with all of the animation and stuff like that, then things look good. And the commercial itself looks great, mostly because of the way the scenes work together in terms of the animation and connecting those things together. We work so much in terms of, you know, making sure that the animation between scene to scene you know feels right some scenes at points were too slow and then it would start slow and then you know end fast and then start slow and then end fast and it makes sense and the transitions between the scenes weren't you know congruent so we had to make sure that if it's speeding up in the end here it needs to speed up at the start here yeah that's that's pretty much uh, a, a lot of what made this commercial look good. Obviously, you know, with the background and all that stuff is what made it uh, uh, look good in terms of visualization point of view. But the animation is super important. And I always, I always, you know, emphasize animation over pretty much everything, especially at the start of the commercial, because if your animation falls apart, the rest of your commercial is not going to look too great. And uh, you always want to make sure that your animation is solid at the start. Um, and then you can worry about, you know, making your model look good from the geometry and the texturing and materials and stuff like that. With, with When it comes to commercials, animation is so important as well as scene structure and video structure in terms of which scenes go into the video the ordering of those scenes as well as you know are, are the scenes do the scenes make sense with the video um, people like to dive straight into you know visualization oh i want to model this thing and then light it and then add materials and it looks so shiny and it looks so clean and it looks so nice and i just want to start rendering but uh the animation is the part that people you know really need to focus on uh because this is what uh helps put this whole video together you know the materials i don't think i really need to go into that much it's just a glossy white material on the front here uh we've got a gold material over there as well with you know some a bit of complex material set up just to make sure that the shine is right uh, so here if i go and apply an hdri so that we can just visualize it what we needed was for there to be you know the sheen that's going across here so that you know where the product's rotating and the camera's rotating and stuff here you can see these these lines going across which adds that realistic look that the product had and applies to the product but in terms of uh that, that's pretty much the only thing that was a little bit uh, complex when it comes to the, the actual material itself. Otherwise, you know, the rest of the materials, the white, it's just a glossy material, nothing complex there. We've got our actual materials set up for the top here. Um, it was a little bit complicated to set up, but basically, you know, we took a, uh, a, a material that has lines that's going across here and uh you know we converted it to make it radial so that it's going in a radial pattern like this so you can see those nice little thin shining lines going across there which is nice and then we just uh you know affected the reflection so that the reflection points inwards um in a spherical manner and then also has some variance 
in terms of um, what how strong the roughness is there versus how strong the roughness is here. And when it gets a little bit more rough, it appears a bit more like this. Um, and then you have this pattern that goes in a 360 degree manner. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. From that point of view, the lighting, we're just using studio lights here. Here you can see a studio light appearing. We've got one down there, one up there. It's just gradient lights. And then we're using an HDRI for the background. So here, if we turn off the depth of field, you can see it's just a sky HDRI that we've applied. We've applied some depth of field upon it to give us that starry look. We've added some particles with Trapco Particular. And then, you know, we've added in, you know, our extra. So this is our raw render that we got straight out of Octane, which still looks decent. And then, you know, we need to boost some of the contrast, the colors, as well as the brightness. So here, you know, we're boosting that on our product itself to make it exposed. Having underexposed renders is a pitfall for a lot of people. A lot of people's products just end up are being underexposed in the end. So that's something that we were very wary of with this. And then also the background, you know, applying all of that stuff, but also the same, you know, applying actual exposure and corrections in the end. But that's it. I mean, there's nothing too crazy in terms of a VFX point of view or anything like that. Uh, projects I always recommend to keep simple. Uh, being complicated does not mean you're an expert. So keep things simple, just PNGs. We're not using like multi passes and all that stuff like that. We're just using a product with a background, good animation, good model simple materials for the most part and then just decent lighting and then here you get what you get uh, a 45 second commercial which i thought was great for his first thing um and it's um doing the job that he wanted it to so yeah hopefully an insight on this project gives you a better look at what you could do to improve your commercials when it comes to 3d if you'd like to work with me personally and uh, get your projects broken down where i work with you on a week-to-week -week basis helping you with the modeling and the materials and putting your commercials and images of your products for your clients together better then schedule a call with us we'll help you get to a professional level when it comes to product advertising commercials images stuff like that and we also help you with you know how to set up your portfolio how to reach out to clients how to get them how to get your clients consistently and have an actual process and system behind your 3d business you know we have had a few students just in the past week get their first clients just by following simple steps that we gave them and our community is just very collaborative and sharing all of the ideas from things that work really well in the uk to things that work really well in the US. If you'd like to work with us, check out the free training and schedule a call. If not, I still hope you have a great week. Hopefully you got some value out of this video and uh, take away some things in terms of how to apply it to your project. Have a great week and hopefully we'll chat soon.